Hello Chess Sir, I am International Master Haridas and welcome back to my channel. For this video, I will talk about my unexpected win against one of my idol, Grandmaster Hikaru Nakamura, and I will give you tips on how to improve your games, so I suggest that you finish the whole video. This game was on chess.com and it was a 3 minute game. Playing with the top players will excite anyone. And of course, it's more exciting if we beat them. The first time I saw Hikaru was on 43rd Olympiad 2018 in Batumi, Georgia. He is in Team USA together with Wesley Saw, Fabiano Caruana, Samuel Shankland, and Ray Robson. Hikaru was one of the most entertaining to watch, especially in live streams. And if we're talking about live streams, there is Magnus Carlsen, Alreza Feruza, and Andrew Tang or also well known as Penguin GM. Okay, so without further ado, let's start. He played B3. So Hikaru was well known of playing Nibzovich Larsen, especially if it's Blitz game. So I played c5, but let's take a look at other options for black. Let's say e5. Alright, so bishop b2, knight c6, then e3. One of the characteristics of this opening is that white will try to play bishop b5 in order to destroy black's pawn structure on the queen side. And hopefully this bishop on b2 will be really strong on this diagonal. So let's say black plays knight f6, bishop b5, of course. There are two possible ideas for black, either to play d6 or bishop d6. So the idea is, if white takes the knight on c6, then black will take back with d pawn. So this bishop is free to go out already. Okay, so let's say after bishop d6, white will play knight a3. What's the point of this move? White wants to actually play knight c4, alright, to add pressure on the e5 pawn. So, of course, black needs to stop that. So, knight a5. So, here, black intends to play a6, b5. So, trying to displace the white knight on a3. And also expanding on the queen side. So, let's say white plays bishop e2. Then a6, c4, stopping b5, then castling. So this was played by Karjakin versus Rea Zansev. Okay. But in the game, white played knight b1. Alright, but of course we can play knight c2 here. Alright, then rook e8, d3. Okay, so let's go back. Okay, in the game, I played c5. Okay, so he played bishop b2, knight c6, e4, then I played e5. So hoping that I can cover up this bishop. And uh, of course, I want to control the center as well. So what is black's other option? Black can also play d6. So let's say bishop b5, bishop d7 f4 so trying to control the e4 square so let's say black plays a6 bishop takes c6 bishop takes c6 and knight c3 so black can add up some pressure on e4 square by playing knight f6 queen e2 e6 knight f3 bishop e7 and castle queen side so if you notice something this was actually transposed to Sicilian opening. Let's say queen c7, then d4. Okay, so c takes d4, knight takes d4. So transposed to Sicilian. And this game was played by Magnus Carlsen versus Lei Tao. Okay, so let's go back to the game. So f4, 
d6 is trying to support the e5 pawn, knight f3, and instead of defending the pawn on e5, I tried to do some counter. I played knight f6. So he played bishop c4. I played bishop e7. Although what happens if I will take the pawn on e4, let's say knight takes e4, there's going to be bishop d5. Knight f6, bishop takes e6, b takes e6, f takes e5, d takes e5, and knight takes e5. So I need to live with these double pawns. So I don't want that. That's why I played bishop e7 here. So f takes e5, d takes e5, then bishop b5. So you can see here he is really determined to destroy my queenside pawn structure. So I just castled kingside. Bishop takes c6, b takes c6, then d3. Of course we know that if our opponent haven't developed his pieces yet, like the minor pieces, he haven't castled yet, and so on, we are taught that we should attack immediately. That's why I played knight g4. And here, of course, white can simply counter this by playing queen e2, stopping knight e3. But I was so shocked because he played h3. After h3, of course, I was so shocked because why did he let me check on h4? So I played bishop h4 check. And here, of course, he can play king e2. Alright. And if I play knight f2, queen e1, hopefully. Then if bishop g3, now I have two threats, the rook and the pawn on e4. So let's say he will play bishop takes e5, bishop takes e5, knight takes e5, and knight takes h1. So of course, this is still winning for black. But what happened was, after bishop h4, he played an unexpected move. King f1, and I was like, Phew. and I played knight e3, check, double attack. Okay, um, this game lasted for a couple of moves, and eventually he resigned. When a player loses a game, he thinks that, oh, I need to study harder only, but we neglect other factors. I can think of at least three factors why we lose our game. First factor, it can be our mood. Let's say we have quarreled with our partner or we have business problems and so on. Of course, we cannot think properly because our minds are buggled. For this situation, I do listen to calm music or meditate. Second factor is body conditioning. We need to build up stamina, especially if the game is standard time control and one game might take 4 to 5 hours. There is a saying that a healthy body is a healthy mind, so we can think properly if we are taking care of our bodies. We can do exercises, eat healthy foods, and so on. Third factor is we are too nervous or too excited before the game. So maintaining balance in our system is the key for us to focus properly. Going back to our game, if you are all wondering what was our overall score, here it is. Even though I only got 1 point out of 15 matches, I'm still happy and playing against him is an honor. So I hope you learned something and if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. This is King Harry and see you all soon.